Today, we'll be picking the brain of Frank McRae. Frank wears multiple hats, including farmer, seed product development officer, and agronomist. So Frank, do you recall a summer in the past that's been similar to what we've been having this season? I generally don't think we see too many typically the same, but when we look at the historical records and that that you've had a look at, that probably 2013 for the central table ends would be equivalent to what we're seeing this year. Almost anything from 2013 that you learnt or thinking about now for this season? Yeah, I guess that we've We've learned a lot over the years, um, both as producers and what we do professionally as agronomists and involved in agriculture generally, and having seeing areas all across the state and interstate. So I think the thing is that is probably to be forward thinking rather than just concentrate on the current. Um, so we'd like to think about what's going to happen two months, six months, 12 months ahead. And thinking two months, four months, six months, 12 months ahead. Is there anything in that two months that people need to be aware of? Yeah, I, th I think certainly we're, where we are at the moment, we're looking okay. We've just had 33 mil of rain overnight. You know, without that rain, we would have went virtually through September without rain. So our seasons can change very quickly and we have to be have plans for what happens if that occurs and monitor that. So we're gonna monitor our pastures, we're going to monitor our livestock and livestock performance and what the seasonal conditions are going to do and be prepared to act, you know, if needed be. What would you say would be, as you're speaking to people, you speak to a lot of people in your roles, what would be the three things that you would stress that people focus on coming into summer? Yeah, certainly I think, um, yeah, I'm probably a little bit different, but my philosophy is not to feed. Um, so. Yeah, we do have hay in a hay shed, but generally in the 24 years that we've been here, I really haven't fed. Um, we feed at weaning, you know, to weed yarn, and so really monitor those situations. And you know, we see that normally we get rid of market stock probably by the first week in December. And, you know, that's our target through our livestock performance is really good through October, November, you know, and then starts to drop off and your market start to shut down. So that period from start of December till the end of January is not, you know, we don't sell any stock in that period. So if you haven't gone by then, you've got to carry them through to February normally. Uh, so monitor those and make decisions on what your stock are doing and where they're going. And what stock would you be prioritising like on here? Uh, certainly we prioritise our young stock or stock ready for market, you know, our weaners and where they're going, um, how they're performing and what they're doing or, you know, something that's gone a bit heavier than the weaners, stuff we're taking up to about 400, 450 kilos. Cool. What, what would you be saying or what do you see people talking about for sun and forage crops? Uh, generally, in our inquiry comes through, you know, probably today it's probably more regen or, you know, pasture cropping or cover crops, regen mixes to go through summer to plant rather than the straight millets or uh, things like cowpeas or lab lab. You know, we're, we're restricted really in what we can do with our summer crops. So you either look at a millet or a forage sorghum or, and your legume component would be most likely a cowpea. Yeah. Cool. Anything out of the ordinary that people are looking at? I certainly think, you know, we've just done ag quip, we've done heady furlough, and a lot of the inquiry is can you do, you know, these mixes that have got multi-species mixes and that to plan through the summer to give them that summer summer performance. Uh, you know, they're looking for livestock benefits plus soil benefits through things like turnips and, you know, yep. uh, radish turnips. Cool. Is there anything that you're hearing um, around the grounds in terms of soil health um, and nutrition in, in during this time? Yeah, certainly we've been very conscious of it for probably the last 18 months, two years, um, both in our cropping and pasture systems that we've looked at probably Instatech have done a, a really good summary and study of um, all their soil tests all for, by postcode, you know, right across both cropping and pasture systems from about 2016, 19 on 20. And we're really running down our phosphorus, nitrogen and sulphur. 
both in our cropping and pasture systems. Um, so we need to address that, you know, look at monitor our pastures going forward and look at whether we need to fertilise and what with and what sort of rates to, to bring those back on track. Okay. We're seeing that, uh, the effects of that low nutrients in our soil, we're seeing it in our pasture growth and livestock performance. You know, we've been, uh, livestock haven't been performing up to expectations. And it, yeah. How, how often do you get your eyes on all of your stock? Do you have a set, I'm going to do it every couple of weeks, I'm going to do it every month? Every stock. Every, every time you drive past, you stop and have a look at them? But basically, probably it depends whether I'm here. If I'm on the farm here, I look at them probably every day or second day. Uh, if I'm away for, for a week with work, you know, my son's next door, he'll look at them or my wife will say, if, give me a phone call and say, if maybe there's no feed in that paddock, you got to shift those cows. So it's probably a, a continual thing. Um, and, you know, I, I guess we're old school in that we, you know, your good, your good livestock producers could monitor what pastures were doing, how your stock were doing and, and performance. So they necessarily didn't know all the science behind it, but they knew when stock were performing and when they weren't. Yeah, it's, yeah. They, they have the no without knowing that yeah, the no. Yeah. And a lot of those producers went through drought periods as well. So, you know, the good stockmen had good dogs, rode horses. They didn't necessarily run around on a motorbike or 60 kilometres, 100 kilometres along the road making the decisions. Uh, what do you normally consider when you, you go away for, for Christmas? Are there things that you consider doing with your paddocks or yeah. things you check on before you leave? Oh, certainly there's two things and it's probably water and fire would be the two big issues that we would be considering and trying to monitor. So, yeah, we normally try and uh, we've got a TSR next to us so, and we're against main roads. Uh, we've got pine for us up on Mount Canobla so far. is not a great risk, but it's always at the forefront of your thinking. Um, so we normally graze strategically around houses, uh, buildings and that to keep those pastures down, uh, graze out our laneways so that stock movement, you've got something that's uh, gonna be moved stock quickly and to, we, we've removed some of the, the burden of residue that's built up over time. Yeah, that's interesting. I hadn't thought about laneways. Yeah, keeping, actually keeping a laneway short Thought yeah. would be. And at age, you know, when, when things are difficult, that stock are difficult to move, you know, they can be perfect until you get something that's unusual, like a moving stock this morning, it's quite windy and they're so stupid to what they normally are. Yeah. So, you know, in a fire, you don't have much time to make your decisions. Yeah. All right. Does anything um, in terms of your advice that you change from like those, I guess we've got the high altitude, high rainfall areas of the tablelands, and then you've got your your slopes. Mm -hmm. Anything that you change in your advice that you give to those people? Yeah, certainly your advice. Um, you have to understand the environment that you're working in and what the limitations of country are. So, you know, a lot of my agronomy experience was at Tamora, you know, and in medium rainfall cropping areas. We're now in a high rainfall, but being able to adapt your advice to suit the environment and your climate and you know the things the assets that you've got whether it's your soil types your rainfall or the production systems that you can run everyone has to be adapted to that awesome. and that comes back to the varieties you grow you know what your agronomic management is and what, what you're going to do so frank you get to work with a lot of really good operators what would be some common um, characteristics of a good operator that you find yeah, I think uh, you know, I've looked at you know not only where I've worked in agriculture, but wherever you go around the world, you've got that leading group of producers, and they're information seekers. Uh, they seek information from more than one source, and generally they make their own decisions or have the final decision, rather than relying on consultants or you know advisors, and understanding why they're making those decisions. So they're your good operators. Mm -hmm. you know, whether they're a family farm or a corporate, they run as a business and... Uh... Yeah, they're there to make money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they stick to that decision. Once they've made the decision, 
Uh, I think sometimes that we have to be adaptable and change our decision. You know, I've made decisions or advise producers to, you know, that just spent say thirty or fifty thousand dollars on pasture seed. It's sitting in the shed, and we've sat on that for sometimes two years until we thought the conditions were right, especially in the low rainfall areas, till we make the decision to sow. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for letting us come around and have a chat to you, Frank, um, and giving us all your advice. Really appreciate it. No, it's been, you're welcome. It's been a really great thing to do and just to hear what's happening about our season, but the broader aspects of the season. We hope the good season continues. Absolutely. Thanks, Lauren and Frank, for the update. If you have any more questions, please check our website or reach out to your nearest local land services office.